Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and today we're talking about when routers attack. Now that sounds a bit much like fear, uncertainty, and doubt, but there are people and organizations being targeted right now by having the routers compromised and made to do things that aren't really good for the people they're targeting. A router is any type of device or computer that's connecting you to the internet. It could be a firewall, could be could be a VPN, but traditionally it's some sort of box like a Fortinet or a Linksys device that's designed to connect to the next router up the stream. It takes the packets from your network and it brings them to the cloud. Now, typically a router is connected to, you guessed it, another router. And this router could be controlled by your ISP. Their ISP might hand this off to another router. And this, of course, is how the internet worked. You've heard the internet and the cloud is just using somebody else's computer. Well, the routers are the devices that bring your queries to those other computers. Now, how are these routers attacked? Well, routers have vulnerabilities just like any other computer and operating system. They have complex open ports and services like BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol. They might have web interfaces to, to manage that. Router administrators can be fish just like any other type of person. Somebody who has a administrator's account could modify the router and, and, and do things to control how it behaves. Routers can actually be compromised by targeting how they are configured from a backup point of view. Most routers are designed to boot from a backup system. If you can compromise the integrity of how a router is configured and cause a reboot, possibly with a denial of service attack, you can actually get that router to um, be configured the way you want. And then lastly, routers, just like firewalls and VPNs and network intrusion prevention systems, process packets as they flow through it. And that processing is complex logic and complex code. Some of that can have a buffer overflow. You can actually achieve, achieve remote, buffer overflow, remote buffer overflow code execution uh, just by sending data through a router. And there's been a lot of vulnerabilities out there reported in this area, and there's probably be many, many more to come. Now, this particular problem, though, it's a hard one to mitigate. First of all, if you just want to do cyber hygiene, focus on hardening and patching, well, you can do that. You might cause some outages. It's one of the reasons that routers, you know, typically get patched last because when you reboot them, your your users, your customers, your employees, they go uh, they go offline. And then even if you could do really really good hygiene on your router, stuff that's in your asset inventory, what about your ISPs? The next router could be targeted by your 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 adversaries. Now, could you actually monitor these routers for intrusions? Like if I can't fix something, maybe I can monitor it. It's really tough. You can't really get like a sysmon or a syslog. You can't deploy an EDR agent on these things. You can't even get flow out of this. A lot of times you these routers are designed outside of the kind of things you can collect traffic on. And it just makes it hard to do incident response or even do things like grab a, a memory image and see what is uh, what is running. So it's a very, very difficult problem. This gets worse, though, when you think about what an adversary could do. So first of all, if you have access to a router, and you just logged all the traffic going through it. Imagine how much an adversary could learn about who you're communicating with, what applications you're using, just even just you know looking at DNS traffic that's that's out there. If you can get a list of what a target is doing, you could possibly create better phishing attacks. You could possibly create uh, just even understanding business partnerships and other people do attack in your supply chain. But a router who's in line could actually be used for many other things. One, you could launch attacks from it, like attacks that originate from the router might be part of your organization's ability to communicate on the inside. It might be, even though it's on the outside, it might be a trusted place an attacker could leapfrog from. Secondarily, if you actually start thinking about rewriting traffic, you can do some pretty nefarious things. The two that I want to point out is one, Imagine rewriting command and control traffic. So imagine you're on the inside of an organization and you're looking for a hostile IP address, 1.1.1.1, something like that. But they don't use that. On the inside, they use 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 .2, 
And when that traffic gets to the router, the router magically rewrites that to 1.1.1.1. So if you were looking for a bad guy IP address, IOC on the inside of a network, and that router's masking that by translating that, that's crazy. And then another thing you could do is you could actually redirect traffic to websites and other farms that had the ability to do exploitation. For example, let's say you knew you had a target, perhaps an iPhone, and you wanted to present an image to this iPhone user that was compromised. Well, maybe you could actually reroute that traffic and render it in such a way that you can deliver an attack. Now, this should sound pretty common as a nation state attack, but it's actually something that I think penetration testers and attackers of the future are going to take advantage of. All right, so what can you do? Well, obviously you have to control what you can control. If you have a router, you gotta patch it, right? If you gotta patch it, you gotta secure it, you gotta monitor it. But the second thing you need to think about is, is if you are going to have an adversary somewhere between you and the internet looking at what you're doing, you've gotta bring your own encryption. And this is why one of the things of zero trust networking is so popular. If you can roll your own encryption, and I'm not just saying just, hey, everything's SSL, everything's TLS, everything's encrypted. I'm saying you need to control your keys. So for your SaaS apps, if you're using Slack, did you upgrade to, to Grid or did you bring your own keys? Are you actually doing key management the same way the DoD and most major banks do? Because if you're not, you're probably exposing your organization to doing things like that. I'm a big fan of stealth overlay layer two networks, right? I don't want to expose any VPNs that can be targeted by the internet. Google Tech Adventures Investment here is a company called Enclave.io. They allow you to run a wide variety of agents and have a mesh network that's basically transparent to everybody else and you manage all your key distribution from, uh, from their management console in the cloud. Now, outside of that, what can you do? Well, you have to assume the internet is a hostile place. Do user behavior monitoring, do anomaly detection, look for all of those kind of things you're supposed to be doing, but you can't trust the internet. You know, everything on the internet is, is basically fake, right? We, we see caching, we see all sorts of, uh, you know, ways to kind of make the internet seem faster. It can all be used to lie, deceive, and send hostile traffic towards us. You have to be aware of that. So I hope people take away a couple things from this. You know, patch your routers, bring some sort of zero trust networking, and then monitor, 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 right? Because the internet is not a safe place. I hope you enjoyed this, this tidbit. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel here and come see us over at Gula Tech Adventures, our website at gula.com, or I'm sorry, gula.tech, and uh, visit us on LinkedIn. I'm Ron Gula. Have a great day. Thank you.